Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about how to make these beautiful lighted wine bottles. Here's a list of things that I usually use for mine. Cordless drill. A 50 bulb package of light string. 3 8 inch grommets which I've gotten at the hardware store. Razor blade scraper, wire stripper, these fluted glass um, diamond coated cutting bits. any number of uh, wine bottles that you'd like to use some heat shrink tubing soldering gun and some flux core solder I got the drill bits right off of eBay and at the moment when I looked and there is actually a set of these uh, out there right now, buy it now price of $12.26 diamond coated hole saw drill bit core drills 10 pieces now I only use the biggest one which is the 12 millimeter but uh, never really hurts to have the extra ones too so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to cut a hole in the bottle and then we're going to put a grommet in so that nothing can hurt that cord going through the glass all right, so I am going to go with this 12 millimeter uh, diamond cutting bit. Put in my cordless drill. The reason I use a cordless drill is because I am going to be working near water, and I don't want any risk of electrocution. So once I have that into my drill, we are going to go ahead and start cutting into the bottle. Now this thing isn't sharp; um, it's not going to cut my finger. So I'm going to use my finger as a guide to. Um, keep it steady as I start cutting into the bottle and once I get a little groove made then I won't need to keep my finger there anymore but let's just go ahead and get started so got a little bit of a start going there wash that off and you can maybe see that there's a little bit of an etch mark right in here I'm going to keep going, I'm going to keep using water as I do this cutting don't want to put too much pressure on it, I usually tilt it a little bit to get that first cut started not the most pleasant noise I like to keep washing it too Usually you want to keep it a little bit wet so that um, that cutting bit doesn't get too hot. Once you can tell that you're in the bottle a little bit, then you can go more straight in at the cut. to get a little bit milky. At some point you'll see that milky stuff kind of drip down on the inside of the bottle and then you'll know to not put quite so much pressure on the drill bit because it's about ready to go right through the bottle. So now I'm through and I can see that milky stuff on the inside of the bottle now. So I know that don't push too hard or you might end up with some messy glass inside there. And we're through. So now I'm going to get that uh, little piece of glass out of there and just dump it out. Um, and then I will run some water through there. You can see a few 
broken pieces of glass so be careful uh, I'm going to run some water through there just to get all of the glass pieces out and my glass bottle with the hole and I'm just going to let that thing dry one other thing I'll mention as this is drying um, if you're going to keep the label on the bottle try not to get it wet I think I did get a little bit of it wet and it's kinda starting to bubble along the edge here um, but uh, if possible try not to get any water on that you can also take the, the uh, labels off and um, just do that by soaking the bottle in hot water and those labels will peel right off and then you can just kind of scrub off the glue with your hand and as long as we're still on the topic of bottles um, you can see this one has kind of some foil around the top I'd kind of like to clean that up um, I like to just have a nice straight edge on that foil so what I'll do is I'll just take my um, razor blade knife and I'll go along the edge, I'll just turn the bottle while this is kind of cutting into that foil and then afterwards I'll just peel that foil away and it'll be a nice straight line across of there. Okay, as I mentioned before, I like to get these 50 bulb strings of lights. Um, I usually get them at Target. Cost about $2.50 each. Um, get them in red, blue, clear, multi, and green. Um, the downside of these bulb strings are that they come with this extra extension cord outlet at the end of them which don't doesn't fit in a bottle I wouldn't want it in the bottle um, there's no use for it I'm not going to be plugging anything into the end of it um, the other thing is is it's got these strings have three wires that run from each bulb to the next um, and we really only need two that third wire just ends up um, making things kind of stiffer and taking up space that we don't need when we're stuffing these things into these bottles. So I'm going to show you how to take this off and get rid of that third wire. Um, it does involve some cutting and uh, heat shrink tubing, um, but it makes it a lot easier, you know, for when you're stuffing it in the bottle. All right, so I'm just going to take uh, ordinary scissors and cut these wires about an inch after the last light um, on that side of the extension cord outlet. Just going to snip that right off. This goes in the garbage and we're going to start unwinding that third wire. And that one um, just goes up basically to the first light. Um, and the only use for this third wire is so that you can have this outlet at the end and plug other strings into it so we're going to remove that third wire um, and uh, we're going to put heat shrink on these ends because you can see that there is a, a metal uh, inside there that would have electricity on it um, and we just don't need to take any chances so we're going to cover that up with heat shrink all right so this part is a little bit easier if you can stretch out the light string. So I'm just going to basically unwind this third wire all the way back to the other end of the string. Okay, so now you can see we have the part of the cord that you plug into the outlet. That goes down to the first light bulb with that third wire is where we snipped it off right there then you've got that goes to the rest of the string and finally the last bulb on the string also has that third wire clipped off and these two uh, ends are the part we're going to put heat shrink tubing on so the heat shrink tubing comes in a little bag with it's got a card on it but I think I bought these at Menards you can get them at Radio Shack whatever and all it is is it's just a piece of tubing, hollow tubing, um, that you cut to size, slip it over 
the end of the wire, heat it up with either a flame or a heat gun and it'll shrink down and basically insulate that wire. Alright, so I just cut a couple of pieces off of this tube. Um, they're about three quarters of an inch in size or maybe in closer to an inch. Um, I'm going to take these and I am going to uh, slip them over the end of that and I'm going to heat it up and then I'm just going to pinch the very end to make it flat and it's not like anybody would be touching these anyway these are going to be inside the bottle um, uh, so there really isn't a whole lot of danger right there but just for safety reasons we're going to put that heat shrink tubing on these two pieces okay we've got both of our ends insulated now and now we can go ahead and plug that in and just make sure that the light setup still works plug it into the outlet here and yes we have a working set of lights which is good I highly recommend not doing any cutting or any of the insulating um, or even the unwinding of the wire uh, while this is plugged in we um, but now what we're going to do is we're going to take these grommets and we put the, one of these grommets into the hole we cut. So basically what you do is you grab these and you kind of pinch it and you have to fit it inside here. This is a rather thick bottle. I can tell by the how thick it is you know, as I look sideways through that hole. This grommet really isn't uh, made for such a thick um, piece of glass that it's going to be protecting from but I think it'll work they are a bit stubborn alright I grabbed a little bamboo stick here we're going to just try and help it in with the um, blunt end of this stick alright so when you get it to this point then I usually just take a pencil and stick it in there and see if I can just kinda get it to sit a little bit better around the edges this one's being a little bit difficult with the thickness of the bottle here Alright, so with the help of that pencil and my bamboo stick, I was able to get this thing nice and round in there. Um, all the edges um, are through and looking the way a grommet should. Alright, so the next thing I'll be doing is I will actually be cutting this cord off relatively close to that first light bulb on the string and then I'm going to feed that cord up through here out the top of the bottle and then I'm going to solder and heat shrink those connections as well and then I'll just pull everything down into the bottle so it's nice and clean. Okay, So now you can see I've got plenty of slack to go all the way up through this thing, this uh, grommet up through the bottle and come out and still be able to attach it to the other side. So I'm going to cut it right about here because um, I want to leave a little bit of room between the light. Alright, so I will cut it right about here. Then I'm going to feed this end of the outlet plug in through the grommet. Just feed it all in. It's going to come out this end and then we'll deal with it at that point. Alright, I've got it all fed in there and it's curled up inside there so I'm going to need to reach in with a piece of paper clip or something to pull that out. Sometimes just by shaking the bottle that wire will come down through the neck but it doesn't appear so this time so I'm just going to reach in there with a paper clip and pull that out. So 
Oh, I've made kind of a hook with a paper clip. I unbent it. Um, I'm going to go see if I can do some fishing here. So I'm going to stick it in here. Grab my end. Pull it out. And that is what we want it to look like at this point. Alright, so now we've got these two ends of snipped wires. We just need to connect them back up and pull or push the lights into the bottle. So I am going to uh, strip a little bit of insulation off of each of these wires. Then we're going to solder them up. Them up. We'll, we'll tin them first and then uh, solder them together and put the heat shrink on. Um, remember to put the heat shrink tubing on before you start soldering. Um, so that you can just slide it up and heat it up and cover up that soldered area. Okay, I've cut my heat shrink tubing. I'm going to slide those onto these wires, but before I do, I'm going to tie a knot in these wires right about here to prevent them from coming out any further than that grommet inside there, just so that if someone pulls on the cord, it's not going to start trying to pull these soldered connections out of the hole. Alright, so I've got my knot tied. Um, I am going to go ahead and strip these wires. I'm going to strip all four of them. So I'm only going to take off about, I've stripped these already, but I'm only going to take off about three-eighths of an inch off of each of these wires um, and then now we'll go ahead and tin them up with the soldering iron alright so now for anyone who hasn't soldered before um, this is your basic soldering gun uh, You push the button and it turns it on and it heats up this little element here and I've got the solder flux core solder in my other hand I'm going to heat up this tip and melt a little bit of the solder on. You can see some smoke coming off as I do that. Basically you want all three things to touch at once. And that little wire then will have solder completely all the way around it. Do that for each of these. All right, so now I have all four of those ends tinned up, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to solder one to the other, and then these two to each other. Before I do, though, I want to make sure I don't forget to slip these heat shrink tubing onto the wires. Um, as I said before, you want to do that before you solder the ends together. Alright, so I've got both of those slid up here onto the wires now. Now I'm just going to kind of do the same thing as when I tinned the wires, but I'm going to hold these. Um, thank you, light bulb, for being in the way. Uh, I'm going to hold these two wires so that they touch, and I'm going to heat them up, and then they'll stick together, and I'll slide that heat shrink tubing down to cover it up and heat that up, and then there will be no electrical wire. Uh, showing. Alright, so here we go. Let's give this a try. Like I said before, I'm just going to hold them both together and heat them both up. You need to hold them very steady once you do the heating it, of it up so that the solder can cool off, um, but now you can tell these two wires are soldered together. Again, I'll slide this heat shrink tubing up to cover that solder joint. I'll heat it up. In fact, let's just go ahead and do that right now. And that connection is done. I'll do the other one and we can start stuffing those lights down into the bottle. All right, that second connection is soldered up, and again, you can tell that it's solid. I'm going to move the heat shrink to cover that one up. We'll give it a little heat. 
Alright, and we are ready to start putting those lights into the bottle. Okay, we've got our plug still sticking out at the end there. Up at the top you can see the knot we made in the cord. We're going to just pull this um, plug. So, I'll show you how this looks from the top now. I usually like to start feeding the lights in light bulb first. So, if you can see that. Got the light bulb first. Feed it in. Just keep shoving them down in there. And this we can now pull. You pull the um, this cord now until we reach that knot. So now we can just keep um, putting these lights down into the bottle. I should have probably flipped this one before I got too far with that wire. You may get to a point where it seems like they don't want to stuff in anymore. And when you do, usually they're all kind of bunched up at the top part of the bottle and, and not too many down at the bottom. So I, you can just go ahead and give it a couple of shakes and that will kind of move those lights down a little bit and you'll again have some more room to be feeding this stuff in. Get the last two in here. This last one I'll feed in bottom side first. All right, and why don't we give it a test? Well, there you have it. I am going to pull these labels off um, just you know, because uh, they cover up too much of the area. Um, I'm not a big fan of these twist-off bottles. Some of them are pretty neat though, like this this frosted one is a twist-off as well. Um, so I'll probably use that. This one though, um, you know, we probably could have gone with a different bottle, one that wasn't a twist-off. Uh, might not be a big deal to most people. I might mention too that the bottom of this one has a really deep um, recess and um, you might want to stay away from those because the lights don't appear to go all the way down it'd be tough to get them to all kind of come down and and uh, fill in that void there so um, probably another good reason not to use this particular bottle in fact I think I'll probably end up just taking it apart I'm gonna go ahead and shut my background lights off too and just give you an idea of how these things look in the dark you know we set them out ourselves I've given them away as um, as holiday gifts to people. Uh, you could go ahead and sell them if you wanted to make them and, and sell them. Um, but just very classy ornaments. Um, a lot of people drink wine. Uh, great thing for you know someone who loves wine to have around their house during the holidays. Um, just a little bit about the lights themselves. You can get them in um, the green cords like what we just jammed into this bottle or you can get them with white cords um, they tend to light up the bottle a little bit more like these two here have white cords in them the rest of these all have the dark green um, and then you can also do these decorative um, blocks um, I've got I guess Halloween lights in that one so um, you know same procedure same holes to drill grommets soldering um, some people will, like these two right here, some people will just stuff them into the bottle and take a cork. I don't know if you can see that, but cut out a little slot and then you could put that in the top of the bottle and then the cord can run down in the back. Um, that's not my preference. Uh, I'd rather just cut the hole in the back of the bottle, put the grommet in do my soldering. It's just so much cleaner looking um, and I don't want to have a cord coming out the top of the bottle, but you can. I just stuffed those in there to see, test the lights and see if they were the colors I would want to come through on those bottles. So anyways, hopefully this is helpful to you. Um, 
If not, send me a comment and um, I'll address it.